Okay, this this is an important topic for us, and it's important not only for your professional life, but also for your per personal life. If you're going to do any kind of investing or anything like that, this kind of information is extremely useful. So we're going to look at ways to detail and analyze a set of financial statements, which is hopefully going to help us gain a new perspective on the performance and the financial position of a company. So you're probably wondering what exactly is financial analysis? It's the process of using a business's financial statements and other related information to evaluate whether a business is created, creating value. So financial reports are going to be used to evaluate the past and current performance of a business. So we can take past performance as an indicator of future performance and then hopefully that will help us predict the future of the business and its overall value. So financial analysis is going to be beneficial to a wide variety of stakeholders, creditors, vendors, investors, owners, and other decision makers on how successful the business is going to be or not. So there's a logical way to look at all the information provided by accountants and others. And that logical way is to first figure out the forces that affect a business. Then analysts can look at the financial statements to determine whether a business is successfully operating within these forces. So the process of financial analysis has five steps. So step one here is going to be to understand a business's business model and strategy. Then to understand the environment in which the business is operating. Three, to analyze the content of the financial statements and other information making financial adjustments if necessary. Four, to analyze the business's operations. And then finally, five, to use the analysis to make decisions. So research and read the comments of management that accompany the financial statements. So financial statements are often part of a business's annual report. And the annual report itself starts with a discussion by management of the business's operations, risks, challenges, and opportunities. This is going to be in the very beginning of the annual report. And that discussion is called the Management Discussion and Analysis Section, or MDNA. And there's a lot of good information contained within that MDNA. Then typically, the auditor's report comes after the MDNA, then the financial statements, and then the notes to the financial statements, which explain the numbers that you find in the financial statements. So that's the basic layout of the actual audit annual report. So a business model is going to describe what a business does, the types of products it sells, and the customers who buy the products. So different businesses are going to have different business models. And business strategy then is how a business uses its business model to create a competitive advantage. So a business's strategy deals with how businesses make customers want to buy their product and not the product of their competitors. So understanding a business's business model and strategy helps identify the things that are critical to the success of the business. Sound financial analysis starts with a solid understanding of the business's business model and strategy. So we talked about the um, second step, which would be understanding the operating environment. So we need to research and examine the environment in which a business is operating. And the MDNA section of the annual report is going to be a good place to start when researching this I issue. So a business environment has two primary parts. One is going to be the economic environment and the other is the competitive environment. So a business's economic environment is how the business is affected overall by the economy in which it operates. So for example, if we're in a deep recession, which we were in uh, a few years back, that obviously is going to impact the profitability of a company. Or perhaps there's some new regulations that have been put out by Congress that affect that particular business. Those are all things that we need to take into account. A business's competitive environment is how a business competes for its customers, suppliers, and other critical resources. And then we use benchmarking quite frequently. It's a technique that helps us understand a business's environment. So it's where we compare a business with similar businesses, often leading competitors. A lot of this analysis can't be done in a vacuum. We need to compare it against previous periods so we can see um, how the business is um, is, I'm sorry, how the business is um, operating compared to previous businesses or how they're operating compared to their competition, things like that. 
Now, before using this information, we must determine if the information is reliable and reflects the operations of the business. So again, how do we do this? We have to go back and look at that audit report. So, um, and if it's complying with generally accepted accounting principles. Remember, what we're looking for is an unqualified opinion. That's the best opinion that our auditors can give. And then um, that will tell us whether or not GAAP is being followed or not. If it's qualified, we'll have to read why. And we're uh, trying to avoid adverse uh, opinions for sure. So financial analysis is about asking questions about value. So this means asking questions about the net income, the time in which the net income is earned, and the risk associated with that net income. So financial analysis looks at how and when a business creates net income, and financial analysis attempts to see how net income changes over time. So there are a couple of questions that we want to ask, and one is going to be, is the business a going concern? And, and in other words, is it going to exist in the future? Obviously, that's something we look for, that they have a good, stable uh, history, and they're going to be in business for a while. Are they earning a net income or loss? Where are they getting its money? We, we studied the uh, statement of cash flows and how important that is in telling us where a company is getting its money and what it's spending its money on. Is it going to be able to pay its debts as they come due? How is the business investing its money? Is it buying more assets? Is it paying off debt? Um, what is it doing with its money? essentially, and are they generating enough income to reward the stockholders for the use of their money? So in order to answer these questions, we need to look at numbers and relationships. So relationships are called ratios, and we've been looking at various ratios all along. And then we need to look at how those ratios and numbers change over time. So we're going to analyze trends over time, and this is extremely important because it's a major part of risk. We want to understand what a business is doing now, what it's done in the past, and what has changed. This is going to help us uh, forecast the future, and then we can use those numbers, ratios, and trends to see if the business is doing a good job or bad job acquiring money, investing money, and operating the business. Okay. All right, so after we've looked at the numbers and ratios and trends, then it's time to make decisions using these key questions. So how is the business performing? What is the value of the business worth? How would you, what would you pay for the business? And then can the business operate more efficiently and improve its value? So we have many analytical tools that we can use to analyze the financial statements of the company. And these tools are going to help us better understand the company and reduce any uncertainty associated with financial information. Our financial analysis is used by many people within the organization. Managers find analysis helpful in planning and controlling operations. External users of financial statements are also interested in the results of comprehensive financial analysis. And then shareholders, creditors, and customers all want to learn as much as possible about the financial health of a company as well. When we complete our analysis, it's essential to compare the results we obtained with those of our competitors other companies in our same industry, and general financial market guidelines. So often our industries will have certain guidelines, so we can compare ourselves against that. And then analysts use numbers found on the financial statement. It's important to understand the sales expense and net income of a business. It's important to understand the amount of a business's assets, liabilities, and stockholders' equity. And it's important to understand how much cash a business has and where it's obtained and using that particular cash. An important part of this financial statement analysis is going to be using horizontal and vertical analysis. Let me just give you a quick example of how this uh, looking at ratios can be important. Let's assume that you own two companies, Company A and Company B. And this year, Company A made net income of $1,000 and Company B made net income of $100. So which company performed best? More than likely, you're going to say Company A because they earned $1,000 of net income where Company B only earned $100. But let's say companies, um, Company A had assets of $100,000 
and the management of company B had $100 in assets. So the, the management of company A only produced $1 of net income for every $100 of assets, while the management of company B produced $1 of net income for every dollar of assets. So given the resources that each company had, the management of company B was able to use their assets more effectively and really outperformed the management of company A. If company B had the same amount of assets as company A, they would have produced uh, $100,000 in net income as opposed to $1,000. So that's why um, this comparison and, and um, not looking at these numbers in a vacuum is so important. So let's get into what some of those tools are. Horizontal analysis, it can be extremely useful in learning more about a company. It's the process of preparing financial data in dollar and percent formats, and they're usually shown side by side, and this is um, used quite regularly in business. Vertical analysis is the process of comparing a company's financial condition and results to a reference base amount, and we'll get in to show you what all those look like here in just a minute. And then over time, the business community has developed several key ratios that are considered important when evaluating the strengths and weaknesses of a company, and we'll cover many of those. And a lot of those will be um, review because you've seen them all before. So let's start with the horizontal analysis. So the study of percentage changes in line items on a comparative financial statement is called horizontal analysis. Although it can be useful to know if individual financial statement amounts, such as wages, sales, or accounts receivable have increased or decreased from the prior period, the percent change is often more relevant and therefore more helpful to know. For example, sales may have increased by $80,000, but considered alone, this fact is not very helpful. For some companies, an $80,000 increase in sales would be significant, while for others it would be minor. So it's better to know what percentage sales have increased from the prior year. For example, knowing that sales have increased by 15% is more meaningful than knowing sales increased by $80,000. To compute the percentage change on the line items on comparative financial statements, we compute the dollar amount change from the earlier period to the later period, which is what you see here, current amount minus the prior period amount. And then we divide that dollar amount of change by the earlier period amount and multiply by 100. We call the earlier period the base year. So here's an example of Clover Corporation. Let's begin the horizontal analysis by calculating the dollar change and percentage change in account balances. Okay, remember the dollar change is the analysis period amount divided by the base. Typically the base is the older period. And then we're gonna take that dollar change and divide it by the base period amount and multiply it by 100. Okay, so what you can see here is the difference between the new amount, which is the analysis amount of 12,000, minus the base amount of 23,000 gets you 11,500. If we take that change of 11,500 divided by the base period amount of 23,500, multiply by 100, you get 48.9%. So there was a 48.9% decrease in cash from 06 to 07 for this particular company. And we could go ahead and do that for all of these different uh, figures. And now you can see, and as a manager, you can start to zero in on the higher percentage amounts or, um, well, just in general, yeah, the higher percentages here we can look at. And you can say, oh, that's 150%. Well, it was only $1,800, so maybe it's not so important but it gives us some things where we can go ahead and focus, and that's uh, exactly what's important for managers. Okay, so let's do a trend analysis. So trend percentages is gonna be a form of horizontal analysis, and that's gonna give us an idea of the direction that a business is taking. So how have sales changed over, say, a five-year period, and what trend does net income show? So these questions can be answered by looking at trend percentages over a period of time, such as three to five years. And to calculate the trend percentages, a base year must first be selected. And a base year's trend percentage is then set to 100%. And the next amounts for subsequent years are expressed as a percentage of the base year amount. So to compute the trend percentages, divide each item for the years following the base year by the base year amount, and then multiply by 100. 
So you take the analysis period amount divided by the base period amount and multiply that by 100. So let's set 2001 as the base period. So all of these numbers here are going to equal 100. And then in order for 2002, you take the analysis amount, 290,000, divided by the base, which was 275, multiplied by 100. That means revenues were 105% of what they were in 2001 and 2002. You can do that for cost of sales as well, analysis amount divided by the base. So those were 104%, and then gross profit was 108%. And if you fill that in, now we can see that cost of goods sold is increasing faster than the increase in sales. And so gross margin is increasing slowly. It's not as in increasing as rapidly as the cost of sales here. Better cost control would, in in I'm sorry, would lead to more rapid increase in gross margin. So they've had a nice increase all along in all of their statistics. Unfortunately, cost of sales is an expense item. And even though they're having good growth in their revenue, the cost of their merchandise is exceeding their growth in their revenues, which is driving down their overall gross profit. Now, some managers then would prefer to review this trend information in chart form, and Excel is an easy way that we could do that. And you can see what would happen if we continue on the same path here. Pretty soon, our, our gross profit is going to um, dwindle and the cost of goods sold is going to continue to go up. So we need to look at some way to reduce the cost of our merchandise or raise our sales price or something. Now let's switch from horizontal analysis to vertical analysis. So common size financial statements are prepared for a single period and we express all items on the statement in terms of one component of that statement. For the income statement, we normally express all items as a percentage of total revenues. For the balance sheet, we generally express all items as a percentage of total assets. So let's do a quick example here. So here is the asset section of the comparative balance sheet for Glover Corporation, and we want to express all line items on the financial statement in terms of total assets. So we set total assets equal to 100%. And we calculate the percentage of total assets made up of cash and cash equivalents. So we divide the total cash and cash equivalents for 2007 by the total assets for 2007. So you got 12,000 divided by total assets of 315. And we multiply that times 100%. So that means 3.8% is how much cash and cash equivalents are of total assets for this company in 07. In 06, if we do the same, 23.5 divided by total assets of 289.7, that number was 8.1%. See if you can calculate the percentage of total assets for accounts receivable and inventory before going on to the next section. And here's the answer, the completed comp computations. So you can see that accounts receivable made up 19% of total assets in 07 and 13.8% in 06. So there's been a drop in total current assets and an increase in property and equipment from 06 to 07. And you can do the same thing for the liabilities and equity side. And then if we look at our income statement, we express all line items on the income statement as a percentage of total sales. So our revenue amount here. So we'll set that to 100%, and then we'll calculate those percentages. So we can take the $360,000 divided by the 520. So cost of sales is 69.2% in 07, whereas it was only 65.6% in 06. So you can see the growth there as well. Let's see if you can do a few more of those. Also, you can then graph that information if it helps you to see it visually. Some managers prefer, prefer charts rather than the raw numbers. 